coming into the newsroom now, and we've learned that UK Prime Minister Theresa May says she's stepping down. Theresa May is resigning and quitting as the UK Conservative leader, effective June 7th. May has been unable to successfully pass the Brexit bill as Britain prepares to leave the European Union. She says she will continue to serve as Prime Minister until a successor is chosen. 5.33 is your time. Taking a look now at today's top stories. A Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Dorchester is hit by hate just days before Memorial Day. Vandals spray-painted hateful messages and swastikas on the memorial's stone pillars. American flags were pulled up and tossed into the water. Plants were also destroyed. Police releasing a photo of a person they think is responsible for the vandalism. And celebrity chef Mario Batali is expected to appear in a Boston courtroom today. He faces indecent assault and battery charges. Prosecutors say Batali groped and kissed a woman against her will at a Back Bay restaurant in 2017. A number of other women have made similar accusations against the chef. Batali denies the allegations. And National Grid crews are working on State Street in Boston. They're working at the same site that was waterlogged hours earlier. You could see it there. Police say a valve attached to a water main broke Thursday morning, destroying the pavement. The road was shut down for about 10 hours. It is back open this morning. The Patriots showing off their hometown pride at practice. Players decked out in black and gold swag, supporting the hometown Bruins as they get ready. A um, couple games coming up, so we're just trying to support them. They support us all the time, so we showing the respect back. Even Coach Bill Belichick letting the Bruins know the Pats have their back. Obviously, want to wish the Bruins well uh, in their Stanley Cup final, and proud of what they're doing, and uh, I wish wish them the very best in in this next series. Earlier in the postseason, Patriots wide receiver Julian Edelman waved the Bruins flag before a game at the Garden. That's how it is here. Uh, you know, opening day, we're at the Sox, wearing the, the Bruins hats right now, go to the South, support them. It's it's a very close-knit city. It's probably, you know, I've never played anywhere else, but I would say it's the best sports city in the world. Pat say they haven't forgotten how the Bruins supported them earlier this year. Those guys, you know, they wore the Patriots hat, you know, for us, and we support them. So it's just, it's a boxy thing. This is really a special time in our city if you're a sports fan. Uh, and I hope we're all enjoying the ride, but, you know, we're pulling for those guys, hoping they come out with the cup. And so the Patriots, we know, they've had a ton of success. They want more, but they say it's the Bruins' turn. That's what is live here at the Garden. John Coco, 7 News, today in New England. Can't wait for that puck to drop. Stay with the news station. You can get the latest on the Bruins' quest for Lord Stanley's Cup right here on air, online, or make sure you download the 7 News mobile and tablet apps. Now on to a story you first saw on 7. A suspected Somerville bank robber is behind bars being held without bail this morning. Federal agents arrested the man they say you can see right here in this surveillance video early Thursday morning in Providence. He is facing federal charges. Authorities say he fired shots inside a Davis Square bank and at a responding officer on May 1st. The suspect took off. You see him right there in that surveillance video, but was tripped up when a bystander tried to tackle him. That's when he dropped his backpack. Now, investigators say they used DNA from that backpack to track down their suspect about three weeks later. I mean, I'm thankful that law enforcement has kind of acknowledged um, the role that my actions played. And um, I appreciate that, you know, member, um, people of the public are appreciated as well. The suspect is scheduled to be in court again next week. Right now, police are investigating how a 70-year-old woman was hit by a commuter rail train, Sky 7 HD, over the scene where this happened Thursday afternoon, right near the Concord station. Police say the Fitchburg train was mostly empty when this woman was hit. She was airlifted to a Boston hospital with serious injuries. We're following breaking news here this morning where North Korea says it refuses to resume its nuclear talks unless the United States changes its position. North Korea resumed short-range missile testing earlier this month. Discussions about denuclearization between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un fell apart after the two met in February. It was their second summit. 
Wild weather leading to serious cleanup following deadly tornadoes in Missouri. At least three people were killed and dozens hurt. The state's capital city taking a direct hit, a twister tearing apart buildings and homes. Cars were flipped and power poles were snapped in half. The community coming together to help their neighbors. We're all pitching in to help each other and it seems to be that we're, we're, we're doing well at it. Meteorologists say there have been more than 130 tornadoes reported in the Midwest over the past five days. And Congress saying help is on the way, not just for those communities torn apart by this week's tornadoes and floods, but those hit by hurricanes and wildfires last year. The Senate passing a multi-billion dollar bill that the president is expected to sign. It took months to accomplish, but the Senate approved a bipartisan disaster relief plan. That will provide long overdue relief for Americans in the Midwest, in the South, in the West, and yes, the territories, including Puerto Rico. The $19.1 billion bill provides funds for areas dealing with the aftermath of disasters, like Hurricane Florence that tore through the Carolinas. The deadly California wildfires and Midwest flooding. Puerto Rico would also get recovery help from Hurricane Maria. It's a huge step forward for communities across the U.S. that have gone far too long without receiving this federal assistance to help them get back on their feet. President Trump applauding the move, saying it gets his approval, but not everyone agrees. If we could do better, we should call the House back in. We should stay here, finish the supplemental disaster, and show the American public that we can govern. And key Republican lawmakers say President Trump plans to sign the bill once it passes through the House. The U.S. Justice Department has filed new charges against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. She is now charged with 17 new counts under the Espionage Act, accused of obtaining and publishing classified information. He's in custody in London right now, where he's still facing extradition to the U.S. after being dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy last month. Assange is also facing a rape charge in Sweden. A historic union in Taiwan, dozens of LGBTQ couples have tied the knot. They are the first same-sex couples to marry in Asia. This comes a week after a groundbreaking marriage equality bill was approved. Activists hope Taiwan's new law will spark change across the whole continent. They say they hope to create a new political party to fight for a ban on same-sex marriage at a 2020 election. It's 541, still ahead on your Friday morning here on 7 News Today in New, Ed New England. New wedding. This is a new wedding. A dream wedding. But it was crashed. We'll tell you what happened to the guy who showed up at this couple's wedding. Look at their faces. Then are you ready to rock? Final preps underway as Boston Calling kicks off. Let's see what the weather's going to be like for that. Chris will give us a sneak peek. And he's got game. Former President Barack Obama showing off his TB12 skills there. Pretty impressive. I thought he was a basketball guy. Yeah, we've seen him shoot hoops. I haven't seen him throw a football. That's a first. Taking a look at the skies for us this morning. A lot of sunshine out there. More clouds around this afternoon. We're going to cool off before we warm up over the weekend. Details on the numbers ahead.